last season as members of Conference USA. Florida Atlantic won by two here at home. UAB won at their place, ending a 20-game FAU win streak. And in the conference championship, Florida Atlantic dominated 78 to 56. UAB won the opening tip. Davis down low against Golden. Good matchup. Davis with the turnaround jumper. That's a great sign for UAB. One of the goals was to get the ball in the paint, and Davis has been quiet, only hitting six points and four points in the last two games. Getting him started early was a goal for the Blazers. Florida Atlantic in the sand-colored uniforms, essentially an off-white with the red numerals, and UAB in the black with the gold trim today. Boyd, three, no good. Tied up on the rebound, jump ball belongs to Florida Atlantic. Tony Tony and Brian Greenlee both had a handle on the basketball, so the Owls will trigger from the baseline with 20 on the shot clock. Boyd out of the corner, another three won't go. Davis with the rebound. Starters for UAB. Landeborg down low, blocked by Golden. Davis, Lendeborg, Gaines, Tony, and Johnson. There's a turnover. Lendeborg, two on two, Gaines with the drive and the finish. Quick 4 0 lead for UAB. 2 0 in the league, Florida Atlantic at 2 1. They lost a tight one at Charlotte, came back and won at Tulane on Thursday night by one. Ten to shoot for Davis. Launches a three and hits. John L. Davis, if it's three, it's me. John L. Davis, excellent shot there. He can hit that long ball, also take it off the rim. You know, Frank, one of the things I found so interesting about his stats, he only made six threes when he was a freshman. He's been working on his game nonstop. Davis got great position down low, but FAU couldn't get the rebound, and Davis puts it back in for two. Great stick back there by Davis, sticking with the play. And you notice here for the Blazers how they're able to set up their defense. Uh, Coach a AK, Coach Kennedy for the Blazers, loves to mix it up. 1-3-1 one, one zone, 2-3 zone, man-to-man. -man that just loves to disrupt the FAU Owls. Ten on the shot clock. Davis waves his teammates out of the way and drives and scores. Davis, you saw his long ball shot, but he can take you down off the dribble one on one. One of the greatest things about his game is he goes north south. He's always trying to get to the rim. And Ann, you mentioned FAU, big key is rebounding. And that last trip down court, they had two defensive rebounders there, and neither came up with it, and they gave up a basket as a result. That can't happen. UAB, one of the best on the offensive and overall defensive rebounds. They lead the American in rebounds as a team so that's one of the big keys with almost, with almost 14 rebounds a game at the offensive end well you always want to get a second chance look at the basket there and a great job drive there by davis davis has all five of fau's points so far last foul was on tony tony Gaines just basically shoved the screener out of the way and davis Bumped his defender and hits the step back triple. Well, we said this was a rivalry game, and you saw it there with the physical activity, but Davis getting that space, hitting his second three of the game, seven points for Davis. I think that possession would tell us they're going to let him play this afternoon. <laughs> That's right. Lengborg has a mismatch down low with Boyd. Now Davis is able to switch on to him. Gaines. Got it down low, Davis. He was shoved by Brian Greenlee. That's a foul on B.J. Greenlee, his first, and the first on the Owls. His first. The intensity. You can feel the energy here in the arena tonight between both of these teams. They're playing tough defense, but also some really great matchups that we're going to get into. Corner jumper won't go for Butta Johnson. Ephraim is his given name. He also goes by the nickname Butter. Steal by Gaines. Gaines, he's the leader of steals in the American, over 200 in his career. Davis backs 
in on Golden Travel. We'll have our first time out of the afternoon. It's a wild start. Both teams going at it physically, and Florida Atlantic with eight points from John L. Davis leads it 8-6 here in the early going. If you're taking a trip with your friends, why pay for four hotel rooms to stay apart from your friends? throw line kind of area and not outside and he realized if he wanted to up his game outside and play maybe beyond college basketball he needed to work on his three-point shot and you can see already hitting two of them here he definitely did he said he's turning it on to be a professional Jalen Gaffney and Brandon Weatherspoon have both checked in for Florida Atlantic and Alejandro Vasquez into the game for the first time for UAB Davis is fouled on his way to the hoop That'll go on Vasquez. And a great look there by Jalen Gaffney. That's what you want to do against a zone is sneak into that little short corner. And Davis is so good at reading defenses and finding those backdoor cuts. And now we find him at the line. John L. this season, 83.6% of the strike. He's got nine points already. And we've got 15 points in the game and 13 of them from guys named Davis. <laughs> Nine for John L, four for Javian on the UAB side. Two and two for Nelly. He's already in double digits. And we're not even five minutes into this game. It's a good sign for the Owls for sure, Frank. Langevort trying to back in against Gaffney. Well, he has the height advantage, and Yaxel able to finish with the baby hook. He just took that on all by himself, kind of cleared out the lane for him, and he can do that. He can drive to the hoop, but he's also 6'9", and can back it down inside as well. Two-point game as these teams go back and forth in the early going. Gaffney open from the foul line. Great decision there by Gaffney. The Owls are so tough to defend when they do that high ball screen with Vlad Golden. Because then you have to decide, are you going to choose Vlad or are you going to close out on the shooter? But Gaffney read that defense very well. And two on the board for FAU. Linda Borg draws the double team. UAB able to swing the ball. Vasquez to Ortiz. Daniel Ortiz, the North Alabama transfer. Gains from three. Long rebound to Martin. Oh, Eurostep can't finish. Tipped by Golden. Eurostep and Golden. He is known for running the floor. You never know when you can get a tip back like that. Great defensive possession there that led to offense for FAU. Six point lead, biggest of the afternoon for Florida Atlantic. Frank, one of the things we talked about with Co Coach May is really them upping their defensive intensity. And so far, I'm seeing that on the defensive end from the Owls. Davis diving for the loose ball, jump ball. It belongs to UAB on the possession arrow. This nice little Euro step by Martin. Good to see him getting in the game. Just misses it, but again, you have a 7-3 guy running the floor, 94 feet, and being able to come up with that offensive rebound and two points on the board. Vlad Golden will take a rest, and Hunt, uh, Giancarlo Rosado will check into the game for the Owls. Eight on the shot clock for UAB off the tie-up ball. Jumper out of the corner by Ortiz won't go. Rebound knocked out. Belongs to Florida Atlantic. Good look at Yaxel Lindenborg averaging 12.3 per game. Over nine rebounds and over two blocks. He is the shot block leader in the American. You see with Vlad going out, the Blazers have switched up their defense, going to, from a 1-2-2 back to the 2-3 zone. Davis with the jump stop, cut off. Martin lock and load on a 3-0. No. Rosado kept the rebound alive, and he drew a foul on UAB. Well, Frank, I like to see that aggression out of Rosado just right there on the offensive boards. That's something that the Owls need to keep them in the game, keep the ball live. Christian Coleman, fresh into the game, picks up his first foul as he had the arm of Giancarlo Rosado hooked. The Owls will keep possession. 
with 20 on the shot clock. Brandon Weatherspoon around the Rosado screen. Spoon for three. Back iron, rebound, and Vasquez of UAB. Vasquez is fouled on the drive by Greenlee. That's his second foul. Vasquez coming off of a, one of his best games in a Blazer uniform. He was a Juco All-American, one in the top 10. You're getting a great look at him there, but he can put it on the floor. He's great at that outside shot. He's really been an impact player for this new season here for UAB. Nick Boyd back in as Greenlee sits with the two fouls. Coleman handing off Gaines and UAB will reset the offense from the perimeter. Coleman backs in on Davis, double team. Gaines, rescue, got it to Coleman for the layup, no. Coleman offensive rebound is good. So many hustle plays on the floor happening. Great way for Chris Coleman to stick with it. That's UAB strength, the offensive rebound. Deep three from Davis, no good. And a foul on Rosado on the rebound. You're getting a good look there at Chris Pullman. Frank, crazy story. He graduated high school being 6'1", and he loved basketball, but he didn't get any looks. He ended up working at Walmart for two years, and guess what? During those two years, he shot up to 6'7". Started to play at NAIA, he got to JUCO, and look at him now. Can you imagine coming out of high school and just keeping your dream alive, and now he's playing Division I basketball. So he's also still kind of learning the game at his new height. That's a great story. This is Coleman with the basketball. Gaines behind the Coleman screen. Battle on the boards. Won by Weatherspoon of FAU. Gaffney, Spoon. The lob for Rosado who pushed off to get open. Second quick foul on Giancarlo Rosado. And Vlad Golden will get up off the bench. I think he was excited knowing he was open underneath the rim, but he's got to take a seat now with those two fouls. 14 fouls on Florida Atlantic here in the first half, three on UAB. And from Johnson back in for UAB, wearing number 24. Vasquez, shake and bake, triple, won't go. Gaffney with the defensive glass. All five Owls are crashing the boards there on that defensive end, getting them out in transition. Martin, down low, Golden for the slam. <laughs> There's the big play by a big bad lad. That's tough to defend underneath the hoop. And did you see how high he kept that ball? He has been trained and skilled at not bringing the ball down where all the defense is. I gotta tell you, that drives me crazy when bigs <laughs> bring the ball down and don't take advantage of their height. That's right, it didn't even go past his head. He kept it up that high. Ortiz, well guarded by Martin. Four to shoot. Ortiz with the leaner, too strong. Martin with the rebound. Owls try to get out in transition. Lob is too far for Golden off the Nick Boyd pass, and we'll have a timeout with 11.02 left to go in the first half here in Boca Raton. Martin finding the big guy, as Ann called him, Big Bad Vlad with the dunk. Owls lead it by six. Players, but one of their best players, Jelly Walker, graduated. He's in the NBA G League for Dallas. But a lot of new JUCO transfers, they had three out of the top ten. And last night I was able to talk to associate head coach for the Blazers, Coach Cross. And he said, yeah, we're really just a work in progress. So they're really trying to find their rhythm, their chemistry, and their communication as a team. Tony misses the jumper. Davis offensive rebound. Jump ball. Arrow favors FAU. Early shooting and UAB now five out of 16. 0 of 4 from 3. They're not a big three-point shooting team. They average just under six threes a game, which is last in the American. So they've got to be able to score inside the arc. And a lot of their shots also, Frank, have been jumpers, mid-range game. And what really worked in those first two possessions was getting the ball into Davis and Lendenborg. And that's where they need to go is in the paint close to the rim. 
Great position inside by Coleman and a goal tend on Coleman. Did you see how high he got on that goal tend? Oh my goodness. His athletic ability is astounding for UAB. But Golden able to pin his defender basically under the rim. And that results in an easy two with the goal tend. UAB is actually playing Vlad one-on-one -on, -one on that offensive end, so I'd like to see if the Owls get back to him on the next set uh, possession. Vasquez with a strong take to the hoop. And that's exactly what we were talking about. Strong drives, getting into the action, two feet away, into the basket, into the rim. Six-point lead for the Owls. Martin lock and load triple, spins out. Rebound loose, and we have a whistle and a foul. It's going to go on UAB and against Alejandro Vasquez. Well, you can see that both coaches here, Coach AK for the Blazers, Coach May for FAU, this week in prep for this game, they must have said many, many times, we have to rebound the ball, box out, screen out, and go after the ball because we've had so many jump balls, but everyone is attacking and going off of the ball, off of the rim. Pick and roll. Golden can't finish. Stuff attempt by Martin wouldn't go. Another example of that. Johnson, turnaround jumper, front iron, battle for the rebound, Martin, great hustle. Boyd, hit ahead to Davis. Nelly to the rim. Just such great control there by Davis. He reads defenses so well, able to read on that fast break, time his jump and finish at the rim. You mentioned the tempo, Ann, and in your view, does that favor FAU if it's high tempo? Oh, yeah, FAU, FAU'd love to score 120 points a game. They have nine, 11 players deep that can each come in and score 18, 20 points, so they love to be in transition, getting those fast break points and playing in a rhythm. Davis can't finish with the left hand. Gaffney wins the rebound battle. He does not have numbers. Martin. Tried to feed Golden, able to rescue to Davis. And an interception by Coleman on the cross-court pass. Three on two. Tony lays it in. Nice finish there, three on two. Chris Coleman not used to running the pass break point position there, but able to come up with the bucket. Well, that's from his 6-1 days when <laughs> yeah. he was a guard. Yeah, back in the day when you were a guard in high school. Lob down low and a beautiful just touch tip by Golden. And you can see that right there, that one-on-one -on -one defense under the bucket against FAU is so hard against Vlad. He is so skilled and has such great touch. Great pass there by Davis leading to that basket. Golden coming off a 19.11 rebound performance at Tulane. Vasquez, good defense by Boyd. Davis down low. Backing in against Golden. Good defense by the Owls. Martin with the rebound. Martin, deep triple, back iron, Gaffney offensive rebounds. Elijah again won't go. He's feeling this, though. I know that one of them are going to drop down. You've seen him all over the defensive end, tipping the ball, getting some great rebounds, and going out on the fast break. I know one will drop for Martin. Soon. Martin, 0 for 5 and 0 for 3 from triple, but he comes up with a block shot. However, a foul call. We have a timeout on the floor. 7.30 left to go first half. Florida Atlantic leads it 22-14 over UAB here in Boca Raton. The fast break and Nellie Davis with two. Ephraim Johnson at the line for two for UAB. You know, this is their first trip to the free throw line, Frank, and UAB leads the American in free throws, and they are excellent at shooting them. They usually shoot them as a team at 75% clip. In their last game versus USF, they shot 41 and were 30 for 41. So that's going to be a key for the Blazers to get some points on the board is attacking the rim and getting to that free throw line. Trey Carroll into the game for the first time for Florida Atlantic with the basketball. Boyd on the drive. Got it to go and one. He has a way, he's left-handed, but he's got that such a great stutter step, and he practices this all time. I was watching him this week. He practices going to the left and actually shooting it over that left shoulder, so he creates that space against his defender. Used his body well against J.B. and Davis, who picks up his first foul, and Boyd completes the old-fashioned three-point play. 
Florida Atlantic with their biggest lead of the afternoon, nine points. And with Trey Carroll in the game, a totally different look here for FAU. Time for the Blazers to get the ball inside and take advantage of Davis' size against Carroll. Gaines knocks over Greenlee, offensive foul. Well, we saw something like that earlier in the game, and they let him go. <laughs> this time, the officials, Joe Lindsay, Bart Lennox, and Will Howard decided that was an offensive foul. But I like to see that action from Gaines. We haven't talked much about him, but he's one of the leading scorers here for UAB, and he is excellent off the dribble. So getting him into the lane and looking for those easy jumpers or drives to the hoops of what the Blazers need. Davis, foul line jumper, no. Gaines with the rebound. for Lengborg with a mismatch underneath. Johnson couldn't back his way in. Now Johnson again. Lengborg down low against Elijah Martin, who picks up a foul. And that is the second on Elijah. That's what you want to do is get the ball into Lendenberg against that mismatch. He's got some height on Martin. But both coaches this week talked about mismatches because when they start subbing, each team has a completely different look. So you have to be ready for switches, being able to look at the post up and look at their clearing out for Yaks on that side. Lendenberg with an awkward drive and the defensive rebound by Davis, who defended him very well. Davis. Gets to the rim, is hammered, and will shoot two. Well, I know UAB's a much different team personnel-wise la than last year, and but there was no log loss between these two squads last year, and I think we're picking up right where we left off. I know. If you see a little bit from the wide-angle view, there is a little bit of talking going on out here. Definitely this rivalry is here, and they're still talking on the free-throw line. A lot of competitive spirit and two really great teams, great players, great programs, and like we mentioned, excellent coaches here. Lendenborg picked up the foul, his first. Davis to the line. Hard foul, nothing more. Thought they might have looked at it for a possible flagrant, and that is what I think Dusty May is talking to the official about. Thirteen points for John L. Davis in this first half. Now 14. And the Owls with their biggest lead. And Johnson gets a step on Weatherspoon and finishes. Great finish. That's what we've been talking about. Great offense there. FAU is playing half-court, full-court defense, and being able to drive around them and finish at the rim is key for the Blazers. Carroll, who has range in his game, not really a true five, although that's the spot he's playing right now. Owls can play five out on that offense, and they do for Carroll. Three! Trey Carroll, he does have range, although he's shooting before that shot just 16% from three this season. Well, he stepped up big when they played that close game against Illinois in Chicago, hitting a couple of threes at the top of the key. He loves that spot, and he can make that any time with that left-hand shot. Lendenborg short. Davis the other way. Weatherspoon left alone for three. No. Davy and Davis with the rebound. Look at Gaines go. What a first step. Lendenborg. Battling three owls, blocked by Weatherspoon. All five owls were on Lendenborg under the basket there. Under five to go, under four and a half actually. Davis with the step through. And a timeout from Andy Kennedy. Florida Atlantic on a run right now, a 14 point lead. Absolutely, Frank. All five of the Owls are crashing the boards, and the, uh, the Blazers are only shooting 30% from the field. And whenever they get a defensive rebound, that means they can get out, get in a rhythm, get on that fast break and transition buckets for the Owls. Owls winning the board battle so far, 20-11. to 11. Gaines with the step back. That's a three. No. Carroll rebounds. 
And that's exactly what we just talked about. One-on-one -on -one basketball can lead to that defensive rebound, and now you have the Owls on the prowl. Davis got it off to Weatherspoon, who can't finish at the rim, but he grabs the rebound. Davis steps outside the arc and throws it. 19 first half points for John L. Davis. They just can't catch a break because they're even crashing the offensive rebounds and that tip out goes out to John L. Davis and he is draining it, feeling it nonstop on fire in the first half. Gains too long. Boy. Nick Boyd penetrates, trying to back his way in. Davis around the Carroll screen. Weatherspoon, he'll fire a triple, no good. JV and Davis with the UAB rebound. Important possession here for the Blazers to really look as a team gets an inside look. The last two plays have been one on one breakdowns. Johnson out of the corner, too strong. Weatherspoon tipped it out. Loose on the deck, and the Owls come up with it. Davis, two on two. Davis with the blow by, but can't finish. That stutter step was pretty. That was going to look nice, but couldn't finish on the end. Davis against Carroll. Double team coming. Coleman kicks out to Ortiz for a triple. Rebound off the floor to Gaffney. FAU is doing just such an excellent job, but whenever they double team, their help rotation is really disrupting UAB on the offensive end, and they're ending up taking those shots, and they're being rushed in that shot. That's why they're also getting those defensive rebounds. So for FAU, they have to be very happy with their defense in this first half. Carroll down low. Tremendous offensive player in high school. The defensive end has been a work in progress for Trey Carroll, but He's come off the bench several times this year and given Florida Atlantic some nice minutes and nice scoring off the bench at a 30-second timeout called by one of our officials. I think he fe feels some moisture on the floor. Well, you take a look at it here, Trey, and, and Frank, you mentioned it. Great offensive player working on his defensive game. But as a former person who loved to shoot and not play as much defense, I love his action because he is makes the most of his minutes. When he gets an opportunity, he impacts the game and has such an influence and impression whenever he actually steps on the court on the offensive end. His mom, he's from Punta Gorda, Florida. His mom was a thousand point scorer in high school and he tells us she is his harshest critic. <laughs> We got to talk to him earlier this week at practice, and she said he coached, she coached him in AAU in high school and would give him that look of, like, you know what to do. So he always said that's his big coach. Well, that ends the FAU run as Coleman with the slam dunk. Well, you can't get any more inside than a bucket like that. Coleman skying for that dunk. Lead is 17 for the Owls. Tend to shoot as Boyd takes a look at the rim. Now the mid-range jumper is pure. Five for Nick Boyd here in the first half. Uh, the screen is working so well for FAU. The Blazers are getting caught running underneath and not choosing either to switch or close out on the shooter. You gotta play that game over and over again for the Owls with that high post ball screen. Now from Johnson, shake and bake jumper is good. They call him Vada Johnson at UAB because he's smooth like butter. Really great three-point shooter and also mid-range game. Boyd on the drive, able to finish at the rim. You saw him again there with that left hand, taking it up against two defenders and such great touch around the rim. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Steal by Carroll. He leads the break. Bounce pass stolen by Ortiz. Great hustle back on defense. And a foul on Carroll diving for the loose ball. Well, we talked about Carroll's defense, but I love to see that aggression. He got out in the passing lane. He's just not used to running the fast break, Frank, like these other guys are. He had the right idea. Boyd was breaking to the rim, but not enough juice on the pass. And Ortiz sprinting back, able to come up with the steal. Now with just 17 seconds to go in the first half, Vlad Golden will check back in. Trey Carroll goes out. Good minutes for Carroll with Rosado dinged up and unavailable. 
And this is a great substitution here by Coach May, putting in Vlad for the box out on the free throw, and also the mismatch on the other end to get one more good look within those 17 seconds. Ortiz with the one and one, rattles the first one in. First points for the North Alabama transfer, averaging almost eight points a game out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Two for two for Ortiz at the line. Now Martin back in and Isaiah Gaines, who was in the game just very briefly, comes out for the Owls. You're seeing another possession to possession substitution. That is just some high ball start strategy there by FAU to get the offensive players in with 15 to go. Shot clock is off. Gaffney double team. Davis, great lob down low. Golden elevates and dominates. Ten first half points. That shot would not have counted. And we will go to half. Usually the swim team is the guys that have the uh, no shirts and the owls painted on. But I think a couple of other students snuck into there. Oh, the energy is just such electric. I think we've been trying to mouth to each other because we can't hear over all the noise and the great music being played here in the arena. Well, John L. Davis, we said he does it all. He just forced a turnover by Lendenborg. That's a tough first possession by UAB coming out of a timeout. They really want to set their defense now to not let any more points go on the board for FAU. Elijah Martin did not score in the first half, but did have five rebounds for the Owls. Davis is cut off. Boyd on the drive. Pull up over Davis. No good. Battle for the rebound, won by John L. Davis. Martin for three, way off. I think it clipped the side of the backboard. Vasquez. Double teamed underneath. Gains for three. Big battle for the rebound. Foul called on JV and Davis, who uh, pleads his case with the official, but I think that was pretty clearly a push up. Well, you can see their intensity has picked up quite a bit offensively and defensively here for the Blazers. Every, every rebound, it seems, and is a huge battle. It is. Every time you're seeing it, it's not actually many of these rebounds getting clean grabs and pull downs. They're actually being tipped around because you have so many guys going after that loose ball. So again, they're cleaning up some sweat off the floor in the corner, and now we're ready to get back to action. Dusty May, who, if you watch our halftime interview with Brian White, signed a 10-year contract right after the Owls' final four run. And that was one of the reasons the Owls wanted to run it back in terms of player personnel. Martin finally gets his basket as he gets inside with the left hand. Great to see Martin on the board there. But as you mentioned, and even though he wasn't scoring in the first half, he was contributing in other areas. He, he can lock down any opponent. That's how physical Martin is on the defensive end. Foul called on the drive. That'll go against Dick Boyd as Gaines tried to make his way to the hoop. First foul against Boyd. That'll send Gaines to the line. 69.5% from the free throw strike this year. You know, Frank, you were talking about Coach May earlier and signing that 10-year contract. That is just so impactful for this program and the university. I love what Coach May always says is we really focus on ourselves, our inner circle, and taking care of our daily habits. That is one of the mentalities he has instilled in the program and on these players. And we've talked about how much they've improved, and it's because of his leadership. Golden took the bump from Davis and still able to get the hook shot to go. That was a great look at the touch that he can have. He took the contact, still able to push it right up over top of the rim. Gaines on the drive. Lendeborg goes all the way in. Wild shot, but he was fouled. Foul on Golden. That's his third. So now with... A minute 59 gone in the second half. If you're Dusty Baby, pull Golden out. 
With this kind of a lead, Frank, I think you do. I think you give him a little bit of a break to get drop some of those minutes down. You don't want to see him getting four because anytime, like we mentioned, different players that come off the bench give UAB different looks on offense. Lendeborg, who shoots 75% at the line and gets to the free throw line on average six times per game. Shot eight now, 83 free throws this season. Lindenborg, we highlighted him in the open. One of the things we didn't mention is, y'all, he only played 11 high school games. His mom and dad played professionally for the Dominican Republic national team and encouraged him to go out for basketball. So being Dominican, he loved baseball. So he is still kind of learning the game. He really just started picking up in 2019. Started his career at Western Arizona. John L. Davis triple is on the money. Davis had to stop, picked up where he left off in that first half. Fourth triple today for John L. Gains on the drive. Unable to finish. Golden with the rebound. Davis in transition. Didn't have anything. Now John L. again. Drives the baseline. Reverses. Swatted by Lendemore, who leads the league in block shots. What a block. Gains. Count the basket. Wow. I thought he traveled. They're all getting this Euro step down, but that was an incredible fast break by Gaines, and that is when he's at the best, is in transition and driving to the hoop. There's the last three by Davis, his fourth of the game. He's got 22. The foul at the other end went on Brian Greenlee, and you see Dusty May <laughs> pleading his case. Like, let's make the calls similar at both ends. Greenlee's third foul, by the way. Lendeborg with an offensive rebound. The Axel's quickness there got around to that offensive board, giving him another look at a shot here for UAB. Tony, triple, good. Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> three points, three names. By the way, that was a R&B group out of, out of Oakland in the 80s and 90s. Oh my gosh, I love that reference. Tony, Tony, that really is his name, spelled differently. Their big hit was, it feels good. Oh yeah, nice, nice Frank. Weatherspoon gave it up to Golden, who finishes. Really unselfish play. Just great ball movement there by the Owls. One of the things that you'll notice on FAU is anytime they're dribbling, each player always has their eyes up and looking for their teammates and open opportunities. They're able to cut to the basket, find those great spots like Vlad did in that short corner. But really, that what sets FAU apart than a lot of other teams is they've got four guards who can drive and they're unselfish play looking for their teammate. The three by Gaines was the first made three by UAB today. They're now one for ten outside the arc. Davis with the fadeaway. He is just money today. He is so tough to defend one-on-one, -on -one, and the Blazers have opted to play him one-on-one, -on -one, but he's just got such a quick first step and great motion towards the rim. Mid-range game, long game. Tony with another three, way off. Davis, the hook over Golden, banked it in. What a move there by Davis off that offensive rebound, taking the contact and taking it up over the taller Vlad Golden underneath the rim. Gaffney on the drive, tried to feed Golden. It'll stay with FAU. We have our first time out of the half. 15.30 left to go here in the second half in Boca Raton in our American Hoops Showcase game. It's a rebound and get up the floor and into your flow of transition offense. Trey Carroll back into the game for Florida Atlantic. UAB on a 9-4 run to cut this down to 17. Nine to shoot. Carroll. Spin move in the paint. Dumps it down low. Davis. And Nelly can count it and one. Well, what a play there by the Owls. We talk about their unselfishness. Carroll getting into the middle of the lane. Moving, I think two or three spin moves there and still being able to make that extra pass under the bucket. You see, again, they keeping their eyes up for their teammates who they know are great at backdoor cutting and finding open space. That's one of the things Coach May always talks about is we love to attack space. Because when you attack space, you're able to either create for yourself or kick for a teammate, Frank. 
Davis completes the three-point play. He's got 27. The foul was on Johnson, who drives and dishes to Davis. Blocked by Martin, but he was on the baseline. And you saw it in his eyes. He was ready to turn the corner and take it all the way up the court. But his intensity on defense has been unmatched by Martin. Davis on the inbound. Now Tony wearing the bright pink shoes. Ortiz tripped as he got into the lane. That's a foul on John L. Davis. You're talking about that last block there by Martin. We talk so often about the Owls having their eyes up on offense. They actually are really great defensively at looking at their surroundings and moving into the passing lanes and seeing where the ball is going to be moved to. It's almost like they're reading the play before the play unfolds. And that just means that these players and this team in this program has a very high basketball IQ. Well, Dusty May says when they're playing their best defense, they're connected defensively, which is exactly what you're saying. You can see that they have like that high mind you talk about when animals move together in a one unison that's what these owls do together but a Johnson with a three big answer there by the Blazers with but a Johnson that's what he's known for shooting that long ball three his first of the game from the three-point line second for UAB from beyond the arc lead down to 17 Gaffney with 10 to shoot. Gaffney fires a three and hits. Great read there by Gaffney. He had a career high 20 in Arizona and usually plays more of a role player looking for the extra assist or the extra pass. So seeing him look for his shot adds another dynamic to the FAU team. Coleman back in for UAB. This is Tony beating JV and Davis. Draws three defenders, finds Tony down low. Good pass by Davis. Great read out of the triple team there by Davis. And look at the other end. Elijah Martin beats his defenders down the floor. And Gaffney with that long ball pass. That was like a football pass to Martin running the court. Ironically, Martin was the high school quarterback <laughs> in Summit, Mississippi. He has that football athletic ability. He was an all-stater on the quarterback position, but loved basketball when you see him playing here. Johnson with another bucket. These teams are shooting the lights out the second half. Florida Atlantic hit five of their last five. UAB six of their last eight. Martin out of the corner, not this time. Coleman rebound. Johnson, he's feeling it right now. That one rattles out, but the Owls fight each other for the rebound. They'll stay with UAB. Nick Boyd and Ryan Greenley back in for Florida Atlantic. Martin and Weatherspoon will head toward Dusty May and take a seat for the time being. Well, this is a free possession for UAB. There were two owls around the rebound. They couldn't figure out who was going to grab it, went off them and out of bounds. <laughs> Sometimes that chaos play happens to end in your favor, and they get it right back. Nick Boyd with the steal. Owls up 18 with 12.50 to go. Davis tried a fancy pass. Greenlee was able to rescue it. Still 14 to shoot. Great play Great. there by FAU. And Greenlee with the finish off the Boyd assist. Oh, or the fundamental Greenlee basketball assist. right there by Greenlee. Stops in the middle of the lane. He knows his teammates are moving in the right direction. He's able to lose his defender and finish for that backdoor cut. That was textbook basketball right there, Frank. Gaines finds Tony. His triple skims off the iron, out of bounds. It'll stay with UAB. You mentioned Jalen Gaffney with that last layup, especially when Nick Boyd was out of the lineup. Jalen looked to his offensive game more than we ever saw last season. He was really looking for a shot, and as you mentioned, came up huge in that overtime victory, double overtime against Arizona. He's just such a great contributor and one of the better defenders here for the Owls, but love to see him looking for his shot. Greenlee with the pull-up. Lindeborg with the rebound. 
We'll see Isaiah Gaines, number five, into the game for the first time for the Owls as Coleman flushes the lob. Hey, we talked about reading each other's eyes, but Gaines, wow, what a lob there to Coleman, and he can get up, almost hits his head on the rim when he jumps up for that dunk. Giancarlo Rosado, we are told, is out for the rest of the game. Gaines working in on Lindeborg gets the ball up to go. Great composure there by Gaines to kind of look at his surroundings and get that nice reversal layup there by the backdoor cut. Foul on John L. Davis as we take a timeout with 11.28 left to go here in Boca Raton. It's the Owls ranked number 24, 66, UAB 46, as Elijah Martin able to finish the fast break. We have rebound and get up the floor and into your flow of transition offense. Trey Carroll back into the game for Florida Atlantic. UAB on a 9-4 run to cut this down to 17. Nine to shoot. Carroll. Spin move in the paint. Dumps it down low. Davis. And Nelly can count it and one. Well, what a play there by the Owls. We talk about their unselfishness. Carroll getting into the middle of the lane. Moving, I think, two or three spin moves there and still being able to make that extra pass under the bucket. You see, again, they keeping their eyes up for their teammates who they know are great at backdoor cutting and finding open space. That's one of the things Coach May always talks about is we love to attack space. Because when you attack space, you're able to either create for yourself or kick for a teammate, Frank. Davis completes the three-point play. He's got 27. The foul was on Johnson, who drives and dishes to Davis. Blocked by Martin, but he was on the baseline. And you saw it in his eyes. He was ready to turn the corner and take it all the way up the court. But his intensity on defense has been unmatched by Martin. Davis on the inbound. Now Tony wearing the bright pink shoes. Ortiz tripped as he got into the lane. That's a foul on John L. Davis. You're talking about that last block there by Martin. We talk so often about the Owls having their eyes up on offense. They actually are really great defensively at looking at their surroundings and moving into the passing lanes and seeing where the ball is going to be moved to. It's almost like they're reading the play before the play unfolds. And that just means that these players and this team in this program has a very high basketball IQ. Well, Dusty May says when they're playing their best defense, they're connected defensively, which is exactly what you're saying. You can see that they have like that high mind you talk about when animals move together in a one unison that's what these owls do together but a Johnson with a three big answer there by the Blazers with but a Johnson that's what he's known for shooting that long ball three his first of the game from the three-point line second for UAB from beyond the arc lead down to 17 Gaffney with 10 to shoot. Gaffney fires a three and hits. Great read there by Gaffney. He had a career high 20 in Arizona and he usually plays more of a role player looking for the extra assist or the extra pass. So seeing him look for his shot adds another dynamic to the FAU team. Coleman back in for UAB. This is Tony beating JV and Davis. Draws three defenders, finds Tony down low. Good pass by Davis. Great read out of the triple team there by Davis. And looking at the other end. Elijah Martin beats his defenders down the floor. And Gaffney with that long ball pass. That was like a football pass to Martin running the court. Ironically, Martin was the high school quarterback <laughs> in Summit, Mississippi. He has that football athletic ability. He was an all-stater on the quarterback position, but loved basketball, and you see him playing here. Johnson with another bucket. These teams are shooting the lights out the second half. Florida Atlantic hit five of their last five. UAB six of their last eight. Martin out of the corner, not this time. Coleman rebound. Johnson, he's feeling it right now. That one rattles out, but the Owls fight each other for the rebound. They'll stay with UAB. Nick Boyd and Ryan Greenlee back in for Florida Atlantic. Ryan 
Martin and Weatherspoon will head toward Dusty May and take a seat for the time being. Well, this is a free possession for UAB. There were two owls around the rebound. They couldn't figure out who was going to grab it, went off them and out of bounds. <laughs> Sometimes that chaos play happens in, in your favor, and they get it right back. Nick Boyd with the steal. Owls up 18 with 12.50 to go. Davis tried a fancy pass. Greenlee was able to rescue it. Still 14 to shoot. Great play Great. there by FAU. And Greenlee with the finish off the Boyd assist. Oh, or the Greenlee assist. Fundamental basketball right there by Greenlee. Stops in the middle of the lane. He knows his teammates are moving in the right direction. He's able to lose his defender and finish for that backdoor cut. That was textbook basketball right there, Frank. Gaines finds Tony. His triple skims off the iron, out of bounds. It'll stay with UAB. You mentioned Jalen Gaffney with that last layup. Especially when Nick Boyd was out of the lineup, Jalen looked to his offensive game more than we ever saw last season. He was really looking for a shot, and as you mentioned, came up huge in that overtime victory, double overtime against Arizona. He's just such a great contributor and one of the better defenders here for the Owls, but love to see him looking for his shot. Greenlee with the pull-up. Lendeborg with the rebound. You see Isaiah Gaines, number five, into the game for the first time for the Owls as Coleman flushes the lob. Hey, we talked about reading each other's eyes, but Gaines, wow, what a lob there to Coleman, and he can get up, almost fits his head on the rim when he jumps up for that dunk. Giancarlo Rosado, we are told, is out for the rest of the game. Gaines working in on Lindeborg gets the layup to go. Great composure there by Gaines to kind of look at his surroundings and get that nice reversal layup there by the backdoor cut. Foul on John L. Davis as we take a timeout with 11.28. Left to go here in Boca Raton. It's the Owls, ranked number 24, 66, UAB 46, as Elijah Martin able to finish the fast break. For the Rebels, and that was when they went on to win the West Division in the SEC. Coach Kennedy, before this game, said, as a player, he was a prominent vocal presence, like a coach on the court, and not surprised at all of the type of success that he has had here, leading Florida Atlantic, being an integral part of that Final Four run that they had here last season. Thanks, Morgan. Lendeborg with the steal off John L. Davis. And Lendeborg drives his way in, finds Vasquez for a triple. And UAB is on the comeback. It's down to 12. Huge shot there for UAB coming out of the timeout. Under seven minutes left in the game, cutting it. Here's Golden with the slam. <laughs> Brian Greenlee with another assist. Glad Golden with 16. You know, Frank, they just haven't really had an answer for Vlad underneath there, whether it's a double team, whether it's those lob buckets. They just haven't had that for an answer for Vlad. Kickball violation against Martin, even though it seemed more like the pass hit him in the foot than him kicking at the ball. But a fresh 20 for UAB as we looked at the last golden dunk. And Weatherspoon picks up the foul, trying to fight around the Davis screen. So FAU had a 22-point lead with early in this second half. And it is now down to 14. And I think the reason for that, Frank, is that UAB has started to get more into their game, which is getting into the free throw line. They've also had some really great looks at the bucket, whether that was driving to the rim or their three-point shooters shooting open shots. Johnson missed the front end of the one-and-one. John L. Davis, guarded by the big guy, Javian Davis. Davis on Davis, and the foul on Javian. Shot won't count. The foul was out on the floor. You foul, call number zero, Javian Davis. 
They're taking a look at the Blazers there. They're doing a man-to-man -man switch at every corner, every screen, because there's been so many great either open shots or rolls to the rim. So now they've chosen to switch every screen, and then you're going to have that mismatch of Davis going against Davis on the other side. Janell with the pull-up, won't go. Martin with a spectacular rebound, but couldn't finish. Two on two the other way, Gaines. He was undercut by Martin, count it, and one. Martin, the trailing defender, caught a piece of Gaines' leg. And that is four, four fouls now on Elijah Martin. Gaines, great read there. Offensively stopping and popping on that transition. Now Martin's going to have to take a seat with that fourth foul. 12 points now for Eric Gaines. Trying to complete the three-point play. And he does. Down to 11 with 5.38 to go. Frank, when did we mention that? Maybe at the 12 or 13 minute mark about all the teams in the American that can make a huge run here in the game. Weatherspoon open for a corner triple. Golden kept it alive momentarily. Vasquez the other way. And the Blazers can make it a single digit game. Vasquez on the drive. Near goal 10 by Golden. And on the follow up, Davis is fouled. That'll go against Nick Boyd. Vasquez getting in the lane. Vlad thinking twice about blocking that. That would have been a goal time, but Davis now gets to go to the line. And another offensive rebound there by UAB, which we talked about is one of their keys to their game. One of their foundation elements that they're great at is UAB hitting the boards. Well, JV and Davis. 6'9", redshirt senior from Canton, Mississippi, hits the front end of the one and one, and suddenly we've got ourselves a game. Chance to cut it to single digits. I talked to assistant coach, Coach Cross for UAB yesterday, talking about Davis and his game. He's been in the program at other different schools before transferring in, but he's never really been a starter, so this is also a new role for Davis so you think of all the transfers that come in but even some of the guys that were from the team before are still learning their role and their expectations in a blazer uniform golden down low backing in on Davis the left hand hook won't go and Yaxel comes up with the rebound Lindeborg doing good work on the boards and here comes UAB again chance to get this to single digits Lindeborg double team Got it down low, and Vasquez with the bank. Wow, how did he get that pass off through the double team, falling down? Heads up play there by UAB. Greenlee unable to answer. Golden fouled on the rebound by Vasquez. For UAB, that's their seventh, and FAU now in the bonus. Gaffney in, Weatherspoon out for the Owls. Last golden shooting the one and one. Golden one and one. No good long. And Vasquez comes away with the deflected rebound. A 40 to 26 spurt for UAB since they were down 22. Vasquez, not this time. Gaffney with the rebound. Gaines went for the steal, didn't get it, and Boyd is fouled on his way to the basket by Vasquez, and that's his fifth. Well, Vasquez will sit. Alejandro with nine points, five rebounds today. And Nick Boyd will go to the line for a much needed one and one for Florida Atlantic. UAB on a mini 6 0 run to get this down to a well, nearly a single digit game. It's eight right now. Wow. Imagine that. The biggest lead was 22, and the Owls look to be in complete control. But, Anna, as we've said all along, this. American Conference, it's a fight every night, and it seems like so many games come down to the last two or three possessions.
you know, teams just start finding the rhythm and finding their flow in the game at different times. And players all across the American League can hit some huge shots. And we've seen that on both ends for FAU and UAB, respectively. Well, back to a 10-point lead. Gaines dumps it down low. Davis with Trey Carroll guarding him and Greenlee forced the turnover. Gaffney wanted to run. Now finds Boyd. Carroll. Greenlee. Cut off by Tony. Carroll with the open jumper. Just such great patience there by the Owls. Every player got touched that ball, driving, dribble jump stop, and looking for their open teammate. Carroll made a great play in the middle of the lane for that open jumper. Tony, pull up jumper, won't go. Battle for the rebound, John L. Davis. Seventh rebound for Davis to go with his 30 points. Boyd on a drive, can't finish. Gaffney is there, counted, and one. We have a timeout on the floor. 3.15 left to go in this one. Jalen Gaffney with some great court awareness gets the follow-up. He'll shoot a free throw when we return. Why choose a sleep number smart bed? Because no time. Well, bidding for his 10th point of the afternoon. And he completes the three-point play. And they're going to make him inbound it again. Not sure what the issue was. Both teams in this second half shooting 51%. UAB 16 of 31. Florida Atlantic 15 of 29. But Vasquez has fouled out for UAB. He was feeling it for a while. And then Eric Gaines has gotten hot. He's got 13. Although it's, he's 0 for 6 from 3. It's almost like the story of their season, Frank, where, you know, they had a couple of rough first games in the very beginning and then really have found their chemistry the last six games. Well, this is what's happened in this first half. They got flustered in the beginning of the first half and then second half been playing much more UAB basketball. Johnson with the corner miss, Greenlee with the rebound. And as was part of their success last year, and all of FAU players are good rebounders. Their guards rebound exceptionally well. They do. They are all over the court, reading defensively, offensively, and really playing off each other, making that extra hustle play for their team. Carroll on the drive, tried to kick it out and missed connection. But Carroll's got seven points off the bench today, and that's been pretty big for Florida Atlantic. Will Shaver, number 25, back in, along with, for the first time, Barry Dunning Jr. for UAB. Gaines out of the corner Dunning three-pointer rims out and another rebound for Greenlee FAU pushing it and now Nick Boyd says let's do the smart thing with 222 left and a 15-point lead to slow it down use that shot clock time management is key here in these last two minutes for FAU Boyd got it off to Carroll short jumper won't go thought it might have been a goal 10 Shaver was up on the rim and Gaffney again does the smart thing. Finds Davis. Carroll with the reverse. I mean, totally that's just textbook basketball right there. Excellent heads up play by Gaffney. There were so many great extra passes there to get that open layup. And that's when the Owls are at their best, is playing put movement basketball when they're sharing the ball, looking for their open teammate. Totally unselfish basketball. And yet another defensive rebound for Brian Greenlee, who has seven. And look at these rebounding totals. Martin with eight, Davis with seven, Greenlee with seven, Gaffney with six. I mean, those are all guards. <laughs> well, they're all guards, and that's what they love to do offensively, but defensively they contribute in so many different ways. And this is what they wanted to get back to. Coach May, the last couple of weeks, has discussed and talked about, we're going to stick to what we know best and do FAU basketball, and that's starting on the defensive end. That's getting those defensive rebounds because then it opens up the floor and it expands their offensive opportunities and all these guys love to run and transition like it's a pickup game because they're in flow they're in motion and they can hit any shot from three all the way into those alley-oop dunks Greenlee who has struggled from the free throw line this year hits one of two 
He's got four points, but as we mentioned, seven rebounds. And from Johnson, Butta on the drive, and that spins in. Tough move there by Johnson. 86-70, with a buck 30 to go. Davis on the blow-by, lost his balance. And he goes down hard and in pain. Oh, that's not good for FAU. Tony shot is swatted out by Gaffney, but the concern at the other end is John L. Davis. Off of the court, and hopefully it's just a little sprain for his ankle. UAB to inbound, poked away by Boyd. It'll stay with the Blazers. So this will be UAB's first loss in conference. They'll drop to two and one, and Florida Atlantic will improve to three and one in an ultra competitive league. Johnson misses on the three. Martin with another rebound. Boyd will back it out. One minute left to go here in our American Hoop Showcase game. Boyd with a triple. Dunning with the rebound. Shaver, he'll lock and load on a triple. Way short. Gaffney with another rebound. Again, the Owls play four guards all the time, so their guards have to rebound, but they've done an exceptional job, and I think today rebounding. They, they really do, and, you know, one of the things that they do is they're always in help. They always help out their other teammates when somebody's driving to the basket, so just as great as they are offensively sharing the ball, they are also always in help to make sure that they can stop the penetration and get those defensive boards. Gaffney with the scoop. That is blocked by Dunning. That wasn't on the way down. Okay. It'll stay with the Owls with two to shoot. Boyd fires the triple off the inbound. Ortiz with the rebound. Six seconds to go in this one. And this is all cosmetic from this point as Ortiz drains a triple. And that'll do it. Daniel Ortiz hits double digits. But the Owls.